Now I've had this tripod for oh, at least uh, 30 years, possibly longer since the early 70s. Velbon AEF3. And uh, anyway, it's it's been okay. Uh, nothing really wrong with it. It's served its purpose. But all these years, I've been putting up with a very rough pan, very stiff. Tilt was okay because it's just a little handle. You tighten it in like that. Anyway, today, getting rid of a couple of small jobs, I thought I'd I'd finally get around to having a look at it. I put in a lot of three-in-one oil into the uh, the contacting area it still wasn't quite there so anyway I, I slackened off the, the the nut and got a screwdriver in here and just expanded it with a bit of brute force and uh, fairly evenly across there until it became loose and now it just works brilliantly tighten that up and Yep, it locks it nicely, no problem. Just a little bit of looseness and free as a breeze. Because when you're panning, the last thing you want is it being really jerky, as the stiffness would do. So, ha, huh, I've only had to wait 40 years for me to uh, finally get it right. <laughs> the next job is uh, I've recently got back into my cassettes and Anyway, uh, it's been uh, uh, really interesting, spending a lot more money than I should do. Bought, buying three decks. I've uh, got my A450T Act to still uh, renovate. And anyway, I'm going through all my cassettes. And this is one of the original T Act cassettes, blank tapes that came with my A450 when I bought it in March 1975 and anyway I'm just going through them playing again and in one of my new machines it just broke and uh, got wrapped around inside there I don't know what happened but anyway what I have to do is pull it apart and splice the tape now this particular cassette is uh, is uh, only coming out one end so I need to uh, get the other end out so that means I'm doing the case itself There's the, the leader tape. Of course, uh, one of the things is not to get uh, the uh, side mixed up. Although, actually, in this case, it just means I turn the, uh, the, hub, <coughs> the hub over, so actually it's not such a big deal. But if they were both magnetic tape, then, yes, you would need to ensure that uh, you have the right side. The idea is to uh, I've noticed some gunk on, on this bit of glue or something. I'll clean that off before uh, we go too far. Hmm, maybe that's what caused the problem in the first place. Anyway, I won't cut it off. I'll I'll still use what's down here. Now, of course it's very flimsy, so the idea is to Hold it down with something. Now, one way is to use cellar tape or sticky tape or scotch tape, uh, but it can be a bit difficult to get off. So if you can just weight it down with something, in my case, I have a couple of lead weights that I used elsewhere, and ensure that you uh, have the magnetic face One good thing about using lead is that it's non-magnetic. So if you're doing two sections of magnetic tape, uh, a lead weight is uh, a sinker of some kind is uh, is a good thing. 
Now, the idea is that you overlap them. Weight down the other end, of course. The more you can overlap them, the easier it is, but it doesn't really matter too much uh, in this case. Now, now, with the leader tape, it doesn't matter what angle the cut is it can be just straight across however assuming that they're both magnetic you aim to cut them diagonally not square the, the reason for that is so that when the the splice goes over the head it doesn't create a single bump and there's a, a soft gradation between the old and the new tape. Unfortunately, it, it has a bit of a curl in it, so that's a bit of a shame. So in this case, what I'll do is I will turn it over but before I do that I will use some splicing tape now this is some Robbins splicing tape that is over 50 years old and is still in excellent condition amazingly now some people have used uh, normally sellotape or scotch tape or sticky tape yeah I, I guess it would work for a while but true splicing tape is hard to beat I don't know if you can even buy this anymore but this is terrific stuff so I cut off a section and place it down sticky side up now the problem of course is that uh, it's hard to, st to put, put down yeah, it keeps wanting to stick to my finger so I get a little bit of sticky tape and, and just hold down the ends. Actually, one end might be enough for this. So now, of course, you stick it on the uh, side away from the head. So that's blah, 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 that side and you place it across about halfway and put it down so the back edge is stuck to the splicing tape now the other side which uh, is also ooh, now the other side, which can be either a leader tape or a magnetic tape. If it's magnetic tape, it's it's easier to see. But in this case, it's uh, it's just leader tape, so it doesn't really matter. But the thing is that you align the cross cross cuts as best you can with tape. It's actually easier to see. I can't see very well now. Let's see what that's like. Pretty damn good, actually. So, make sure they're nicely stuck. Next thing is to trim them. You can use a blade or scissors. Uh, it'd be nice if they were non-magnetic, uh, which is, I guess, where a degausser would come in handy. But I... Uh, I've got one on order, but hasn't arrived yet. Anyway, this is only leader tape here, so it doesn't matter. And you trim. Oh, that's good. And the other way.
No, it's not quite in alignment, but it's hard to tell being clear and I'm not that fussed with it. So we cut that as well. Oops, not quite. You don't want any edges sticking out, so some uh, people back in the old days used to always say slightly cut in to the uh, splice so that there's no protruding edges whatsoever. And that advice still applies now. If it's a little bit narrower, well, what the hell? It doesn't matter. It's better than uh, the break. Okay, so here we have the splice. And uh, we're back in business. Put it back in the cassette and Bob's your uncle. We'll be good. I might add that uh, in the old days, how I got the splicing tape was because I was into uh, three and a half inch uh, reels. I have a, uh, a National RQ300S recorder player that I got given as a present back in the late 60s, 1967 I think, as a birthday present or something. And uh, yeah, it's a great little machine uh, which uh, needs some work on it and I will uh, do that in, a, in another video uh, when I can. But part of that, uh, in the day, I bought a little roll of leader tape. It's the same thickness as the reel-to-reel -reel tape and, and not the same as as uh, cassette tape, of course, but fortunately uh, leader, leader tape for cassettes is not hard to come by. You, you, just, uh, you just trash an old cassette. Okay, now, let's put all this back together. It's so easy to be all thumbs with this. So fine and lightweight. It's a lightweight more than anything. It just floats in air, so to speak. Yeah, it's running in a different direction than it was before. Oh well. Oops. It's being a stubborn little so-and-so. Not being able to see it easily doesn't help. Just keeps wanting to bounce out. I'm sure with practice this would be a lot easier. Yay! Finally. Okay. I had to lose about a metre of uh, tape, but eh, that's life. So hopefully it will live for another day. Who would have thought this splicing tape would still be useful 50 years, more than 50 years later? It's, it's amazing. And it's still really sticky and uh, works well. Robbins. Robbins was a really cheap tape manufacturer back in the day. I have a number of Robbins tapes because that was back when I was in school and 
and uh, university and it was, uh, I didn't have a lot of money, even though I did, <laughs> did buy a few things. Right, here we go, let's try it. The tape was recorded in 1975. That's uh, 45 years ago and uh, still works quite well. In fact, I had, had to put the Dolby on to uh, make it sound uh, more correct. So there you go. It's just a, an old TX low noise high output from 1975. So tape splicing, you can do it. <laughs> 